I am Professor Ngunyulu from the University of Johannesburg. I am the head of Department of Nursing. And in U21, I'm the chairperson of Nursing and Midwifery Discipline Group. So I should like to warmly welcome everyone who joined us now, including those that are still going to join to our U21 Nursing and Midwifery uh, Discipline Group where we are celebrating the International Nurses and Midwives Day today. So we decided on the theme of the day as the effects of climate change on nursing and midwifery, which is a global perspective from the lens of nursing and midwifery students in the U21 Health Science Group network. So for those that are joining us for the first time today, um, U21 is a group that started somewhere, was established somewhere in 2000 as a collaborative group of members of different faculties, more especially within the health sciences internationally. And so far we have a medicine group, we have public health group, we have dentistry group, and we have us as nursing and midwifery group. We also have pharmacy group, health and rehab sciences, including biomedical sciences. So it was called U21 as it was started by, U, by, by 21 universities within the health science group of which by now um, we might be more than 21. I, I hope Alicia is having the updated list of our universities. So the University of Johannesburg is part of the, of the group. Um, can you move to the next slide, Alicia? Yeah. So I already welcomed everyone. We find ourselves celebrating uh, two days today, which is the International Nurses Day and the International Midwifery Day. Uh, International Nurses Day was it's usually on the 12th of May every year, like this year it, it was. And International Midwifery Day was on the 5th of May. So we decided to join the two, uh, the two events today so that we celebrate. Hence, the theme is talking to uh, effect of climate change on nurses, uh, nursing and midwifery. So we are having our four students that are going to join to, to present to us today. And the, the, the presentations will start will be started by uh, Mr. Kakiso Tukisi, of which he already maybe already joined us. Alicia, please check for me. Oops, that's correct. Um yes. on the call. All right, thank you so much, as he requested, and he will be followed by Tiffany from Hong Kong University, and the third presenter will be Tapelo from the University of Johannesburg, and the last one will be Tato. So after each presentation, we can have five, a, a, a few questions. If they, they are there, we can take a few questions. And then at the end of the four presentations, we'll be discussing based on the content of the presentations. So allow me to call Mr. Tukisi to start with his presentation. Mr. Tukisi, the time is yours now. Thank you. Good morning, good <laughs> greetings everyone. I am Tukisi Kahiso, 
and I am a PhD candidate maternal and child nursing science from the University of Johannesburg. I think I'm going to wait for Alicia to just load in my presentation. I'm going to start in a few seconds. Oh, okay. Um, just give me a moment, sorry. I thought you were... Oh, let me do it from this side so that I uh, can... Yeah, I've just done it for you. You have started? Yep. Yep, if I can... Okay. So I am doing the effect of the climate change in the midwifery context. I, I have already said I am in the maternal and child nursing science. May I have this next slide, please? Can you see? Can I, yes, I can see. I am doing the effect of climate change, particularly in the midwifery context, because I am here in this group, particularly for the mother and child. So my presentation will be on that side. Please move to the next slide. Can you, can you see my screen? Because I've moved it for you. I think I have overridden your screen, so it's fine. I'm going to take control from this side. Okay, okay. Okay. So in the midwifery context or in the midwifery practice, the midwife is mainly concerned about the promotion of the health of both mothers as well as the neonates. So this is where they do, they do the antenatal care and intrapartum care as well as the postnatal care. And this is all directed at ensuring that we've got a reduction in the neonatal as well as the maternal mortalities. But now the effects of the climate change itself, which refers to the shift in the weather, as well as the temperatures globally, are introducing a far much complex context for the midwife to function. So amongst many, many effects of this climate change, we've got a shift towards the extremely hot temperatures. So extremely hot temperatures in the midwifery context, this is what they are going to do. They are going to predispose our mothers to severe dehydration, which can potentially cause uh, impairment in the placenta secre secretion function of the placenta, whereby the hormones that are responsible for maintenance of pregnancy are going to be impaired, and we can definitely end up with preterm labor. So with preterm labor, we do get a premature who run a risk of neonatal deaths, mainly because of the prematurity related complications. According to the existing literature, the very extreme hot temperatures are most likely to increase the, uh, the incidence of preterm labor by almost 16%. Within the climate change as well, we can have severe storms, which can definitely cause a drop in temperatures and then predisposing our neonates, particularly in our squatter, in the squatter camps where we know of improper housing, thus predisposing our neonates to the detrimental effects of hypothermia. We also have got the prevalence of diseases and I'm singling out malaria in this context. Malaria is going to result because of the extremely hot temperatures that can go up to winter as well as the extreme rainfalls. The combination of these two creates a breeding ground for the mosquitoes, which we know carry a microorganism called Plasmodium falciparum. A Plasmodium falciparum is deadly 
or is dangerous in the midwifery context because of its ability to cause the destruction of red blood cells and anemia is going to result. So with the result of anemia, particularly in a pregnant woman, we do have a, what we call a, a reduction in the amount of blood, oxygenated blood flowing towards the fetal placental unit. That is going to predispose our fetus there to intrauterine hypoxia, and then we can end up with intrauterine fetal death. Anemia also in a pregnant woman is able to cause the ischemia of the placenta because the placenta is not going to be able to receive enough oxygenation to be perfused as an organ, but that is going to result in what we call placenta abruptio. And then we can also have the spontaneous preterm labor in, in, in this case, mainly because if the placenta is not going to receive enough oxygenation due to the presence of anemia that is there, then the placenta cannot also perform its secretory function of releasing the hormone progesterone used for maintenance of pregnancy. Therefore, we end up with preterm labor and all of those related complications of prematurity. The extreme rains as well as extreme hot temperatures can definitely predispose our pregnant women to hunger and starvation because of they are, re they are relying on the vegetations. And then with hunger and starvation, particularly in the midwifery context, we can have our women suffering from malnutrition. So the presence of malnutrition in a pregnant woman will definitely mean the presence of intrauterine growth restriction. Climate change has, caused, oh, has also got an ability to really cause the displacement of these women, moving them away from the clinical facilities and this contravenes what we know about the basic antenatal care, meaning we are not going to see our pregnant women barely in a context where they are within five kilometer radius to the nearest clinical health care facility for emergency purposes related to the complications with their pregnancies. But what does this now mean for the midwifery context? This suggests that we do have got a lot on our plate as midwives, we do have a lot of risks that we need to be attending to. And then we've got a responsibility in the antenatal care to really do risk identifications. And then from the risk that we have identified to really come up with the specific interventions for these women. And then our health education also will have to be robust because of the context that is being introduced now. We know that our women are going, we are going to have a lot of high risk patients that we, are, we will need to deal with, but we also know of our situation here in our country where we do not have enough facilities as depicted by the second picture here, where there were 96 pregnant mothers in the hospital, meaning all of these women are high risk. So, this is what we are dealing with. And then with all of these high risk conditions from the pregnant mothers, we are definitely going to end up with a need to interrupt the pregnancy, a need for, pre a, a, a need for delivery of these women because they are suffering from preterm labor. And we are going to also have a high load of the newborn babies who are premature, who need the neonatal intensive care unit. And then we also know that we are under-resourced in that context. And this is what we are currently dealing with right now, where the neonates or the newborn babies who need the neonatal care neonatal nursing care are being admitted and placed in boxes because there is just no incubator to care for all of them. So climate change is really causing a, a, a very difficult context for the midwife to work. And that would be my end of the presentation. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'll take questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Tukisi, for the wonderful presentation.
from the midwifery perspective, you can see, you can hear the tone of a midwife as you are presenting. Can we really clap hands for him? Any questions, colleagues, for Mr. Tukisi? I don't see any hands. Um, if we have questions or they come after he left, I'm not sure what time he's leaving as he requested to leave after presentation, Mr. Tukisi. Are you still yeah, with I was us up. for how long? For five more minutes. I think Tapelo's hand is up. All right. Thank you so much, Tapelo. Um, good morning, um, Mr. Gahi. So I just wanted to ask how um, um, it's actually terrible that they put the babies in the boxes, but how does that like affect the babies? Okay, if the babies are going to be placed in the box, you, I will need to take you back to the physiology of the newborn baby here. The newborn baby is unable to control their own temperatures the way you and I would. They are going to, if they are going to be exposed to hypothermia, then they are going to suffer from what we call non-shivering femogenesis. And non-shivering femogenesis simply mean there is a lot of glucose that is being utilized so that there could be metabolic processes where heat is going to be generated for these neonates. So if they are, you are exposing them to coldness, it would mean you are definitely exposing them to hypothermia. And then with the to hypoglycemia, my apologies, to hypoglycemia and then all of those related effects. So at the later stage, if I'm going to go deeper into the pathophysiology, they are able to also suffer from a very severe respiratory distress and we can definitely lose them. Thank you. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, uh, Mr. Tukisi, and thank you so much, Tapelo. Any other questions, colleagues? I see uh, Dr. J's hand is up. Dr. Jacobs? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Tukisi, for a very good presentation. I also just want to uh, um, make people aware that there is a, in certain countries they do use they provide the hospitals with boxes um, but the insulation of that because of the scarcity of some of the equipment that we have remember in developing countries uh, developed countries it is easy to get the equipment that is available but in the underdeveloped countries it's not as easy because funding is always a problem um, the issue here is that those type of boxes where they do put in the babies and they can make it nice and warm however it should not be on a floor because the cold from the floor comes through the boxes and um, so the, there is a practice like that as an emergency practice. But as Mr. Tukisi said, it's very important that the, um, that the temperature, the thermoregulation must be done properly. Thank you. Thank you. That's all what I wanted to add. Thank you so much, Dr. Jacobs. Do we have any other question for Mr. Tukisi? I don't see any hand. Thank you so much, colleagues, for questions. And thank you so much, Mr. Tukisi. We really appreciate your time and your wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you very now much, we call Professor. Up. Are you leaving, Mr. Tukisi? I'm going to leave now in five minutes. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. We'll keep in touch if you leave. Um, now is the time for Tiffany from Hong Kong. 
to give us a presentation. Yes. Over to you, Tiffany. So thank you. And uh, mm. let me go can back to the first page. Sorry. Mm. Um, I read it this last night. Okay, so um, so you can hear me, right? Okay, and uh, I'll start now. And yes, uh, okay. thank you. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you uh, wherever you are in. And I'm uh, Yulan Tong. You may also call me Tiffany. I'm a final year nursing student from the University of Hong Kong, and uh, I've studied Master of Public Health in the same institution during a gap year. And uh, this is my background. And today I will talk about uh, climate change and nursing Hong Kong perspective. And um, Today, uh, I will try to explain the perspectives of nurses and midwives in Hong Kong context and explore common global challenges in health sectors and nursing communities against uh, climate change. And first of all, introduce a bit about uh, Hong Kong. And Hong Kong is a coastal city with a subtropical climate and is densely populated. By subtropical, it means it is rather humid with rains and hot temperature during the summer. It is. It also faces typhoons and sometimes floods with heavy rains. And by the latest data, Hong Kong is having a temperature increase per decade doubled in recent decades, that of the past century. There were also increased rise of rainfall and sea level in couple with extreme events uh, such as storms uh, and flooding, and it can lead to various diseases and concerns. Sense. And the impact of uh, Typhoon Mankud uh, still imprints on the local mines, where several high-rise buildings glasses were all smashed by the strong wind. And at the end of the day, um, the disadvantaged group are impacted the most and further exacerbates uh, health inequity. And uh, and on uh, the KP, there are rather limited local research as climate change and uh, its health impacts are relatively new concept uh, to the local nursing community. And for practicing nurses and midwives, it is pointed out that there were needs for raising climate uh, awareness and provide transition and upskill training for nurses, including skills to assess population health risk and capacity to implement health and climate change programs. In another cross-sectional study, local nurses were found to be relatively unprepared for disasters, including climate disasters such as flooding. And this resonates with studies from uh, other places such as India, mainland China, the UK, Germany, etc., that practicing nurses and midwives have few actions on climate change and its impacts potentially uh, due to low confidence, limited uh, support and resources and various barriers such as limited time and workplace culture. And for research on nursing students and educators is again uh, limited in local context for both uh, students and educators. Globally, uh, research on educators are also limited, but with relatively abundance of research on nursing students. To roughly estimate the inclusion of climate change components into local nursing programs, I skimmed through the course content of each nursing programs in Hong Kong and use the inclusion of community, public health, nursing, and relevant causes as the proxy measure. Of course, this is not highly accurate as I did not ask uh, the lecturers themselves on whether they specifically include climate change and sustainability components. And these calls were included in, uh, in around 67% uh, uh, of the course, in which the actual number is expected to be much lower. Such insufficient inclusion of climate change and sustainability as part of the curriculum is resonated by research globally, such as the UK and Turkey, that many of the nursing students did not recognize tertiary education as an information source for climate change and its impact. 
And we can see it was much lower in high or professional deployment level as well. And a study on disaster nursing education among students proved to significantly improve their knowledge and perceived ability, but again, not their willingness to take action. And this suggested, again, boosting self-confidence and efficacy with learner-centered learning may improve their willingness to action. And Thus, there are several concerns arises. First, there is insufficient nursing education on climate change and its health impacts. Second, the insufficient action by nurses despite high motivation and concern may hint on the insufficient confidence and most importantly, insufficient opportunities and presence of barriers at workplace. And thirdly, from the news in Hong Kong, Ch mainland China, uh, countries outside of Asia like the UK or even the UN report showed increase in medical waste during COVID and created a facade that infection control or healthcare industries must be in the opposition of waste reduction and climate change action. In addition, there are also current gaps in uh, research and actions. And uh, first, the current climate change uh, nursing research was dominated by Western countries and omits the perspectives from nations that are more vulnerable to climate change. Second, back in 2018, the ICN uh, already made recommendations to nurses, um, but there is yet research on studying nurses and midwives preparedness to action on these recommendations. Interprofessional teams can bring synergy to effective climate change action, including uh, uh, sectors such as uh, engineering, town planning, and more. But scoping reviews reveal that uh, climate change action currently mostly stayed in intraprofessional level. Next, um, Few local public healthcare facilities and none of the private uh, healthcare facilities uh, commit themselves to co uh, conduct carbon audit in the past years. And the Department of Health uh, itself of the government, though, conducted the audit. The latest one was conducted in, back in 2019 without transparent report and follow up actions. And uh, what's more is that the local carbon audit uh, guidelines are incomprehensive as compared to an earlier guideline published by an international NGO, uh, Healthcare Without Harm, which you can see at the right bottom corner, such as the uh, inclusion of the aspects of procurement and food catering, which can be potential game changers. And also it is prime time for health scientists to review and update these guidelines to make climate change action possible even during a pandemic. So, um, so what opportunities we have to, uh, to address these concerns and gaps. Our School of Nursing is currently conducting a study uh, led by uh, Dr. Pesci Chow on the preparedness of uh, nurses on climate change. We collaborate with our U21 health sciences group partners, including the University of Johannesburg to assess uh, the achievement and preparedness to achieve the uh, ICN 2018 statement recommendations among nurses and explore the differences in the achievement, preparedness, awareness, and attitudes towards climate change across diverse countries and regions. In addition, developing climate smart healthcare hood proof uh, that healthcare industry and environmental protection can be partners and break the public or even uh, health professionals false impression that healthcare has nothing to do with our environment and climate. So a concept first introduced by the World Bank in 2017, climate smart healthcare approach uh, breaks the silo of low carbon and resilient strategies in an overarching framework compared to the current separate approach. For example, telehealth provides the low carbon healthcare service and provides resilience to ensure health services access even during climate events. Decentralizing care and developing primary healthcare can also prevent disease to reduce the carbon footprints in later disease stages while keeping the community, again, resilient to reach um, health services at primary level. So a couple with further uh, illustration on this concept under the pandemic by the World Bank and recommendations of medical waste reduction by the WHO after the COVID, um, the climate smart healthcare approach become more refined for different places to develop their own smart uh, climate smart healthcare. 
And uh, I think I believe nurses have pivotal role in global climate actions. That's we are the largest group in health professionals. We are the largest group of end users of many health facilities, technologies, and medications. And we closely observe uh, climate vulnerable uh, populations of them at the forefront and um, people such as uh, older adults, children, uh, ethnic minorities, migrants, indigenous people, homeless or those living in poverty, pregnant women, people with disabilities, essential workers and people with chronic diseases. And as nurses and midwives of the future, there are things we can do for our environment, be a policy activist and advocate for uh, climate friendly policies through joining nurse led policy advocate associations such as ANHE or join petition or even have political engagement. Next, emphasize equity by working with vulnerable communities to develop resilience plan and involve them in decision making. Then empower and educate your friends, families, neighbors and colleagues, for example, in Hong Kong community or uh, occupational safety nurses can educate the public on the heat stress warning uh, at work system that recently published and take appropriate measures when these warnings are in effect. And next, engage in intersectoral collaboration. For example, uh, hospitals uh, in the Hong Kong East cluster under the hospital authority have their own hospital environmental management team comprised of nurses, doctors, allied health professionals, administrators, and engineers. Last and most importantly, Nurses, midwives can be leaders and innovators of the future. Like the lady on the left, uh, she's a local nursing student in Hong Kong who started her own jewelry brand using coffee capsules. And the lady shown on the rise uh, is a U.S. Uh, nursing uh, nurse scientist who helped uh, the local Latino farming communities uh, by studying and implementing evidence-based interventions to protect them against heat stress. So by being policy advocates, uh, equity supporters, educators, uh, intersector collaborators, leaders and innovators, nurses and midwives indeed have the ability to drive climate actions and innovations in healthcare industries, local and global communities. So uh, thank you. And this is my reference. And thank you, Dr. Polly Chen and Dr. Uh, Patsy Chow for supporting uh, this sharing. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for a very wonderful and comprehensive uh, presentation. Can we put our hands together for her, please? Any questions for Tiffany? Colleagues? Questions for Tiffany? I don't see any hand. So if the question come after we're still having to, we're still going to discuss, to have a discussion as the whole group after the fourth presenter. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Uh, so now I'm calling upon the third presenter, who's uh, Tapelo. Tapelo, the stage is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Tapelo Madiva, and good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are around the world. I am a first year from the University of Johannesburg studying Bachelor of Nursing. And today I will be explaining how climate change affects nursing and midwifery and the illnesses and the conditions brought about climate change. A quote that I am inspired by is, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much by Helen Keller. 
So what is climate change and its effects? Climate change involves, involves the long changes in temperature and weather patterns. In South Africa, we have experienced the massive effect on climate change. For instance, we have experienced extreme heat waves, droughts in the Western Cape, flooding in the KwaZulu-Natal, and disease outbreaks such as cholera and malaria. For those of you who don't know what Western Cape and KwaZulu-Natal are, these are provinces in my country, for instance, like states in the USA. So how does this affect the people of the country? With higher temperatures, this leads to an increase in infectious diseases being spread, in particular malaria. Mosquito populations increase and are able to spread the disease more rapidly. Regarding cholera, this is due to water pollution, as it is obtained by contaminated water and food with the cholera bacterium. This disease spreads rapidly in regions with insufficient treatment of sewage and drinking water. These regions are also known as rural areas. And this is a problem that we are currently facing right now. I think the death toll has risen to 17 people. The weather changes brought about by climate change introduced heavy rains leading to the floodings in KZN, and this increases transmission of water and vector, vector borne diseases. And these floodings have caused people to lose their homes, cars, food, and infrastructure in general. Furthermore, the rainfall deficit brought by the weather changes or climate change have affected the Western Cape and contributed to droughts that followed and they are struggling to obtain water and are putting um, precautions on water drinking. So how does this affect the healthcare sector and what can we do about it? These disasters create a chaotic environment in nearby hospitals, leading to overcrowding and impacting healthcare delivery and access to the people. Therefore, as nurses, it is our responsibility to give healthcare education to our patients. That is why for the disease malaria, our patients and people need to be aware of the hotspot areas and precautions and preventions to take when visiting or traveling these areas. Um, regarding cholera, we need to let our patients know how they can treat and sterilize water and reduce the transmission of this disease. As nurses, we have the power to make great contributions to ease climate change and support communities and people stricken by these effects. We can help them adapt to these conditions by educating them. To conclude, it is evident that the changes in temperature and weather patterns that have impacted my country and my career in nursing According to the CDC, which is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, our risk for infectious diseases is increasing because of climate change. According to the article, it states that we need to maintain a strong public health system and workforce in order to predict, prevent, detect, and respond to these new diseases. According to Prilliman, an article that he wrote in March 2022, he emphasized that climate change is making hundreds of diseases worse. I would like to thank my lecturer, Dr. Machaka, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you so much for listening to me today. And please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tapelo, for a very wonderful and comprehensive presentation from a first year student. Thank you so much. Can we clap hands for her? Thank you. Colleagues. Any questions for Tapelo, colleagues? From her presentation? Is there any hand that I can't see? No, Prof, there's no hand okay. at the moment raised. Okay. Thank you so much, Tapelo. 
uh, we will come back to you during the present during the discussion time. Um, thank you for the clapping of hands. I'm trying to check where I can also clap hands. Yes. Thank you so much. Our last presenter, I see a hand raised. Is it me? No. Our last presenter for sorry, today. Proof, is... There is... Sorry, oh, Proof. Thank you so the much. Thank there, you so much. There is, there is a hand raised, Carol. I see. Carol. Hello, good morning. Can ask um, you a from the UK. Sorry, um, I need to leave in about um, five minutes. So I just wanted to um, just to say, um, Tapella, thank you. That was an excellent presentation. Really, really good, especially as a first year student. Well done. Um, there is a question there for Tiffany and maybe Tapello can actually, all of the students can think about it really. And that's about then their curriculum at the moment. So, you know, in terms of, these are really important issues that you're raising today, um, discussing, you know, climate change, but also discussing about how that relates to um, what Tiffany's pointed out is that nurses, you know, don't necessarily in the local context appreciate these issues or they're not being openly discussed. So where do we need to um, place this in, in the curriculum? So where does that get discussed in the in in your in your um, courses in that first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and actually does that get discussed um, when you go out into the clinical environments, into the wards, into the communities, and and how how are you having those conversations with already existing professionals in the field, um, and do you get those debates and discussions? Because today is really important about raising that awareness, but what do we do and take that back as, as um, educators to, to improve on this for the future? Um, so maybe I will answer that first because I, Thanks, uh, I, did, I did receive your message and I was, I was thinking about it and I was typing, but really slowly. So I, I think uh, I may be quick, uh, a bit more quick in answering you uh, orally. So uh, uh, so when I first uh, get in touch with this topic of climate change in my final year uh, in the uh, community nursing uh, courses and also um, in my research uh, projects, um, I didn't, I, uh, I expressed, at first didn't expect it to be so much uh, interlinked with our profession and when I first know about it I think there are a great potential into introducing the concept to students at a at an earlier stage um, with my uh, public health background I know about One Health I know about uh, how the environment is related to us but I just never know that uh, nursing can be uh, one uh, can be a profession of so much profound impacts that we can actually do a lot more than what uh, we are currently. And, um, and I think uh, first one by introducing it earlier to the class and uh, second uh, when I read through the literature although not very comprehensively but uh, I do see a pattern of uh, researchers saying that um, being learner-centered, uh, making the learning fun, for example, using simulation, um, uh, aside from uh, theory-based uh, teaching, uh, could be uh, important uh, for students to actually um, become, uh, to learn more about the uh, severity of the climate change impacts on health, and also um, to actually make them more confident and more willing to actually respond to uh, to um, the uh, climate change actions. And uh, they themselves will also uh, try to uh, initiate more, uh, if as a nursing educator, I think maybe uh, the school can also make more uh, climate change related initiatives for the students to join. So it can make their memories more vivid and, and they will not just stay at the theory part, but also on the practical side, they will also 
do these things by themselves, I think. So maybe other students can also share their uh, thoughts. That's brilliant. Thank you, Tiffany. Really comprehensive. Well done. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, uh, Carol, for the very relevant question. We really need to wake up as nurses and midwives. Any other hand? You can leave, Carol. Thank you so much. We really appreciate. Thank you. Bye-bye. You to be part of the team. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you, Tiffany. Well done. And uh, now it's time for Tato, our fourth presenter, also a first year student from the University of Johannesburg. The stage is yours, Tato. Thank you very much. Professor already introduced me. Um, my name is Tato Magolewa, a first year nursing student from the University of Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, can everybody see my slides? Is everyone able to see? Yes, Tato. Okay. So um, I will be presenting on the effects of climate change on nursing and midwifery from a global perspective from the lens of nursing and midwifery students in the U21 Health Sciences Food Network. Um, here is a quote that I am driven by and inspired, and it's by an unknown person. Read this quote. Save one person, you are a hero. Save 100 people, you are a nurse. This really, this really highlights how important nurses are. Now, my focus points for this topic, I will be focusing on nursing as a physical practice rather than not, and not as a profession with respect to how it is affected by climate change. I will also be- so, Sorry, sorry Tapelo to, to disturb. I, I, maybe I'm the only one, I, I hardly hear Tato. Am I the only one? I'm not sure whether my, 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 my speaker is low, but I'm, I'm, I hardly hear what you are saying. Maybe you just need to increase the volume on your screen and a, a, the, your voice a bit. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that, Prof. It would have been a waste, thank you very much. Um, am I audible now? Am I audible to everyone? Prof? From my side, you are a bit better, Tato. You can continue. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. So what I will be focusing on, I'll be focusing on nursing as a physical practice and not as a profession, with, with respect to how it is affected by climate change. I will also be focusing on nurses and how they are affected personally and professionally in the field. Um, I will be focusing also on the positive and negative effects of climate change on nurses and patients. It even sounds funny that climate change can have positive effects. Um, it's more like finding a needle in a haystack. So uh, the first three points will be focusing on the rather positive side of climate change. Now, what climate change does uh, in nursing is, for, is that it forces the alertness of nurses and other healthcare professionals. Victims of brutal climate change conditions that end up in hospitals actually keep nurses and other healthcare professionals on their toes. If you can actually think about it, when climate change strikes, it is a crisis. Everyone is moving, everyone is working. So the positiveness of that is that work is being done, effective work is being done. Uh, the second point um, is that constant practice helps make nursing better. 
we all know the basic, um, we all have the basic logic that constant practice leads to perfection. Practice makes perfect, that's how it's put. Uh, with that being said, this becomes rather more helpful for us as nursing students, the future of modern day nursing. And this helps us by exposure, ultimately grooming us into becoming uh, critical and functional nurses eager to attend to all our patients. And this is very important. Uh, the very last point on the positive side of climate change on nursing are values. Values of nurses in this regard are tested to the max. And how they are tested and how they become positive is that with the many different patients that are coming from uh, experiences from different climate change conditions, our values actually create a baseline on how to approach those types of patients, on how to treat patients of different climate change conditions uh, backgrounds regarding their experiences. And the expected negative effects of climate change that I'll be focusing on now. Um, let's look at the high intake of patients in hospitals. We have to be mindful that when climate change strikes, a lot of things are affected. Uh, uh, nutrition is affected. Uh, shelters are being ruined all over. Diseases are, are, are contracted and everything. So this high intake of patients in the hospital actually makes the, 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 the hospital itself less, uh, less hygienic. Of course, a, a hospital is a place where patients are supposed to be taken care of. But then we have to be mindful that we're taking in patients with diseases from these climate changes and everything. So it actually increases the risk of transmission of these illnesses in the hospital. And this is a very, very negative effect of climate change to nursing as a whole. Another point is the potential risks uh, to, to the patient's lives. When climate change strikes and there is a large intake of patients in the hospital, patient care accuracy depletes and that is a fact. It actually depletes. And this is because uh, nurses, nurses are also people, they also get tired, they're human beings. So when this happens, there is a lot of patients to actually take care of. There is a lot of patients who, 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 who have to be given attention. And what this does is that it lessens the accuracy for proper health care. Human errors may occur in that regard. And that really, really puts the patient's life in danger. Um, what else? Evacuations from the hospital itself. Given that climate change affects the hospital, the whole healthcare center, it will force evacuation of all people. It will force evacuations of patients, of, of nurses, of doctors, everywhere. And then in this regard, they will be now moving from a place where these patients have to be taken care of, from a place where proper equipment, recommended equipment to take care of these patients is left. And what this then does is that it actually puts the lives of patients at more risk. And this is something that has actually occurred. Um, as I conclude, above I have discussed both the positive and negative impacts uh, of climate change on nursing, specifically nursing. And the solution that the solutions that I think will be helpful in, 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 in addressing climate change is adequate training for nursing students. Now, Berner and other authors in the article that was posted, that was published in 2012, have outlined that even though organizations and institutions have addressed the importance of education and advocacy, uh, student nurses are, are inadequately uh, prepared regarding health impacts of climate change. They, they are underprepared and, and, and they, they, 
they will respond less when climate change strikes. So adequate training for nursing students will be uh, 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 a very beneficial, a very beneficial solution both to nursing, nurses, and patients. Um, another solution, another solution which is actually practiced by most organizations is health education for communities. If health education was to be more preached and more exposed to these communities experiencing climate change, uh, a better response, not only by nurses, but also the community will be observed. The health, if, if health education would include um, sustainable diet for communities, uh, restraint from deforestation, you know, and the likes, that will actually help in responding and decreasing the, imp the impact and effects of climate change on communities, uh, rippling over to decreasing the effects and impacts of climate change on nursing. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Thank you so much, Tato, for a very wonderful and comprehensive presentation as a first year student. Well done. Well done. Um, uh, let's put our hands together, colleagues, for our first year students, future leaders. Um, thank you so much. And thank you so much for all the four presenters for today. Um, I think I will take this time for discussion for the whole group. Looking at the four presenters, I, I believe we we are coming from different uh, uh, from different countries. Uh, the presenters are just from uh, UJ, Johannes, South Africa, and Hong Kong. So uh, within the group, we might be having other 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 colleagues that are coming from other countries. Um, can we can we can we talk about this? What 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 are the things that you 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 think is similar to your own country? Is different? Uh, let, let's 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 I'm opening this for for discussion, colleagues. Let's be free. This is our time. This is our issue that we need to bring our heads together and our 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 ideas together on how best can we prepare ourselves for the future pandemics that are resulting from climate change. Can we take this time, five to 10 minutes to discuss? Any comment, any question, any idea? I'm expecting hands up and since uh, Alicia is sharing the screen, I can't see the hand, but if there's a hand, please let me know. I see Katie where did you raise your hand, Katie where? Yes. Katie where? Tiffany has a question. Oh, raised her hand. Yes. <laughs> oh, Tiffany. So, yeah. So oh, thank I, you. Yeah. I want to uh like maybe continue the question that um, that uh, just now um, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Cara Greenway, uh, Greenway has asked. So I, I would like to know how as first year students, uh, the, pe uh, the Pelo and Plato, um, how, how do you think that, um, how about, that is uh, how we can do better to raise uh, the awareness, uh, the willingness to do actions among nursing students in your perspective, in your own country. Thank you so much, um, um, 
Uh, Tiffany, there's the question, Tabelo. Um, hi, Tiffany. I, I would just like to say um, I recently did an assignment on generational impacts and how the older generation does affect the younger generation. And one of the points I pointed out was mindset, because we learn from them when we go to our clinicals and our practicals, we learn from the older nurses. They teach us everything they know. So if we want to start um, um impacting and changing climate change and letting educating people on how to do it we need to start with them the older nurses so that they don't teach us their old mindsets of what matters we need to show them how they can impact climate change the training that needs to be done so they can teach us when we get to the clinical setting so that they don't teach us the wrong things and yeah i would like to yeah i'd like to start there the teaching the older nurses on how to tackle climate change before we start with us because as a younger generation we are generally more mindful of these things so yeah thank you thank you so much tabelo for a comprehensive response and it's very relevant really we need to be updated as older nurses, more especially within practice, because they are responsible for role modeling the young ones. Thank you so much. Uh, Tato. Um, yes, Prof. So I think that we can actually, because we have um, these nurses, travel nurses, we have nurses who are influencers who are very big on social media. I feel like we can utilize those nurses in our field. I feel like with cooperation and collaboration with them, we can actually spread the word about climate change. Using those types of nurses who travel to places who, who, who have many followers on social media, it's easy for us to get to the masses using them by promoting this cause in promoting this cause. So I feel like using these types of nurses will be very beneficial. And that's how we can actually address, educate, and counter climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tato, for the, for the relevant response. Well done. Any other response to Tiffany's question from the floor colleagues? I don't see any hand. Uh, colleagues, uh, from my side, oh, Dr. J. Thank you, Prophet colleagues. I just wanted to, to indicate that in terms of nursing within a community, nurses are very aware uh, in terms, not, I'm not talking about hospital nurses, I'm talking about nurses working in communities, um, on the ground, on the level, with patients coming from the different areas, patients coming with the diseases after uh, to the first level of service delivery, which would be the primary healthcare setting. Those nurses are very aware of the impact of what climate does to the communities. Um, and they are mindful of the diseases that happens when, when the environment does, because in, in terms of community service, you look at the patients comprehensively. You don't just look at the sick patient when they're lying in the bed in a hospital. In a community setting, you would look at the patient comprehensively because you need to know where they come from, what is their backgrounds, what is the, the place where they stay. And that makes you as the community health nurse mindful of the, the environment that your patients come from. And then according to that, then because you're part of the community, you then also provide health education aligned with that. And climate change is never separate 
from the work of a community nurse. It's always part of what they do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. J. Uh, we really appreciate your input. Any other input, colleagues? Okay, so... Um, Hi, can I say something? Yes, yes, Very nice. Please. Thank you. I think today I have listened to all the very wonderful presentation. I think being a student, you can think so um, such important issue and uh, and related this issue to your to your uh, study and your research. That's really wonderful. So I think uh, if we can put more uh, knowledge and uh, practice in that area, that will be improve or a contribution in in that area. So that really very wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for the input. Much, much appreciated. Um, any other input? I think mm -hmm. I think um, there are no comments, no more comments. And, <laughs> and um, I think Rowena, Professor uh, Rowena wanted to do a short conclusion, but maybe she's just dropped off um, the line. Um, so um, why don't I just um, on behalf of her, thank all of you, not just the students for presenting, but all of you as participants for joining us and listening. Um, this session um, is recorded, so I will share uh, onto our YouTube channel. And once it's been shared, feel free to share with more of your peers, colleagues, faculty, uh, once again, thank you all and hope to stay connected and see you in the future. Take care. Bye. 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 -bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you.